Good morning. Welcome to our first video lesson about physics. The first one is kinematics number one on our video lessons. Again, the point of doing this is to give you the time to really think about these problems and to not be rushed during class. So it's important that you try to solve these problems and then look at the video to help you out with this. So I'm going to be using this uh, program called um, workspace and what it's going to do is allow me to actually record these problems and show you how they work. If they're longer than 15 minutes I must break it down to two parts otherwise I have to pay for the program so um, bear with me if I do. Let's start off with problem number one. Problem number one looks deceivingly simple um, but it is complex because we got two cars going in two directions and having their, well sorry, not two directions, one direction, but they're going to have um, two different speeds. The question is the following. A car traveling 88 kilometers per hour is 110 meters behind a truck traveling 75 kilometers per hour. How long will it take the car to reach the truck? So first off, um, when I notice this problem, it has nothing to do with acceleration. The reason why is it's not changing its speed. and it doesn't imply that it is changing its speed. So we can say and automatically assume that these are constant speeds. Let's get a picture of what's going on. So we have the car, here it is. There's our little car. And it says it's 110 meters behind our truck, like this. And there's our truck. Now the car is going faster than the truck, which makes sense, otherwise it would never catch up, like that. And the question is, how long will it take the car to reach the truck? Now, it's not that simple because this car is actually moving. It's not a problem where this is stationary and then we're figuring out how long it takes to get to this point. This car is also moving. So what we have here is this truck is going to go basically some extra distance, I'm going to call X, we don't know what it is, well this car right here is behind it. So by the time it even gets to this point, the truck has already gone X point. So in other words, we need to know basically right here, this point P I'll call it, um, you know, how long does it take? So as this car is going, this car is going, and they'll both meet at some arbitrary point over here. Unfortunately, I can't really show you with my um, cursor because I only have one, but basically this car and these cars are both moving, and they're both going to hit a point over here um, at which they'll meet. So that's the question, is how long it takes to time to get here. Okay, um, a couple of standard things I'd like to do before I even solve the problem is make sure all my units are the same. Generally, when we solve physics problems, we want time in seconds. So that's number one. Number two, kilometers per hour is not friendly with meters. So what I'm going to do is actually convert these into meters per second, because then we get our values in the units that we want and are compatible with the units that are given. You can solve this with kilometers and you can solve this with hours, um, which is fine, but generally we like to stick to meters per second. So my first step in this is just converting these um, kilometers per hour to meters per second. So I'm going to set up a um, conversion factor. So 88 kilometers per hour. I'll start off with this one. And what I want to do is do meters per second. So what I'm going to do is treat these two units separately. First I'm going to get rid of the kilometers, so I have to put that on the bottom. I know in one kilometer there are approximately 1,000 meters. If you don't know this, you can look it up, that's fine with me. And notice that we'll cancel out the kilometers and we're left with meters, which is what we want. Now I've got to get rid of the hours. So I know in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Once again, I know that, but you can look that up. That gets rid of our hours. And then we have seconds in the bottom. So when I multiply across and divide, so I'm going to multiply 88 times 1,000, divide by 3,600, I get 24.44 meters per second, just like that. 
Um, and basically, I'm going to erase that 88 just so we don't get confused and use it. Sometimes, you know, when we're solving problems by accident, we use that number. So let's just use the meters per second number automatically. So let's do that. So this becomes 24.44. With the same setup and process, I'm going to convert this to meters per second. I'm going to go pretty fast, but basically I'm just changing this number. So what that means is I go 75 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. And when I do that, oops, let me do that real quick. One, two, three. I get 20.83 meters per second. Same thing, let's just get rid of this so we don't confuse ourselves. There we go. Part one, complete. That's meters per second, sorry. Okay, now what I want to do is model their motion. Now both of these, car and truck, will use the constant velocity equation. Velocity is distance over time as follows. Um, once again, that is because it's not changing velocity. There's nothing that signifies that. So if we want to model our car, it's going to be the velocity of the car, C for car, how far the car went divided by how long it took the car to go. Same thing. The truck, T for truck, the velocity of the truck is going to be how far the truck went divided by the time the truck took to get there. Now, notice one major point here is that they meet at some point. When you meet at any point, you're going to share the same time. You have to be at the same place at the same time. So truck of the um, time of the car is going to equal time of the truck. I'm going to use that to help us out. So um, let's put some numbers in. Um, so the velocity of the car we know is 24.44 meters per second. How far did the car go? Um, well, let's um, sorry, scroll up a little bit. Let's fix this. Oops. Sorry. There you go. All right. So notice that the car not only has to go 110 meters because it's behind the truck, but it also has to go the additional distance that that truck went. So the car's distance is 110 meters plus that extra distance. That's how far that car has to go. Divided by time. Now, I'm not going to put a variable here because we already said that those two times are equal. In fact, I'm going to use that later. So this is the correct model for the car. The model for the truck, here we go, is the following. We need the truck speed, which is this value. And the truck is, you know, in front of the car, and it goes some unknown distance x. So that's our unknown right there. That's how far it goes. And then it's going to share that time like that. So first of all, when we have two unknowns, um, we need at least two equations, which luckily we have. But more importantly, um, notice that these two times are the same. So what I'm going to do to solve this problem is actually eliminate time first by setting each equal to time, because time equals time. Find x, and then go back and find time. So it's a little roundabout, but it will find and solve our problem. We're hitting the nine minute mark, so I might have to break this down. So first, um, eliminate our t. Um, then I'm going to solve for x. And then I'm going to solve for t. That is my, um, oops, t. That's a t. That's a terrible t, but um, here, let me get, get rid of that. There we go. t. <laughs> okay. How do we eliminate x? I'm sorry, t. Well, if I rearrange the equation, these two can switch, so I get t equals 110. So I did a quick math trick. Um, anytime you have a setup like this, 
and you want to solve for the bottom piece, you can just switch the two. Um, you can, if you don't believe me, solve it out using algebra, um, or you can just take my word for it. Same thing, you'll see what I do here is just switch these things around. It's a quick way to solve this. So notice t equals this, t equals that. If they're the same, I can set them equal to one another. And notice I eliminated t by doing that. I made a statement for t to say that they're equal. And now I have a way to solve for x, which is basically what we're solving for is how far did it go when they met. So looking for the place, basically, where they meet. So here we go. Um, cross multiply these two. So what you get is 110 meters plus x times the 20.83 meters per second equals x times 24.44. At this point, it's algebra. That's what I'm doing here. So if I distribute this to each term like that, this is what happens. I want to get x by itself because we have something x here, so I want to get this to be something x. So I'm doing 110 multiplied by 20.83, and I get a very large number, which makes sense. Um, this will be uh, basically... Um, let's not worry about the units, let's just go for numbers for now. So this becomes 20.83x equals, I'm going to drop the units just to go faster, x, like that. So now I'm solving for x, so I'm going to move that over by subtracting, so 24.44 minus 20.83. So I get this um, large number um, equals... 3.61x, and then I'll divide both sides by x, which is 2291.3 divided by 3.61. x is going to equal to 634.71 meters. So what did we just solve for? This is not the answer to the problem, but what we did find we go up here is how far the car went uh, or how far basically the truck went in addition to how far the car went right here now obviously I forgot the decimal places but just to give you an idea of what we solve for like this okay so I'm gonna break this down into two parts as I only have two minutes left um, so what I'm gonna do now in the next video is um, when we eliminated T we solve for X I guess we could solve for time I could do it real quick. All right, let's do the last part then. Now that we have x, we could pick one of these equations to solve for t. Let's pick the easiest one, right? So I'm going to go over here, sorry. Time is equal to x, which we have is 634.71 meters, divided by 20.83. Ta-da! How about that? So when I do that, I get the total time and the answer to the problem is 30.47 seconds. So that's the answer. So I'll just box that, start that. There you go. That's how long it takes for the car to catch up to meet um, each other like that. So that's one method. Um, there's an alternate method to solve this problem by using relative speeds. Um, but I wouldn't, well, if you understand that, you can do that one too. So there's multiple methods for this. So thank you for watching, and um, get ready for the next video.